Hi, my friend, it's Pat Sloan here for my daily video. It's Saturday. So let's see, there's a lot of things to chat about. We're just gonna have a little quilt chat today. First of all, so many amazing summer soiree blocks. You are guys are incredible, incredible, incredible. What I love is the enthusiasm of all of you and the story. Some of you are telling me about the parties that you've put on, uh, you know, doing an invite to meet, remember the blog is called Meet Me At. So I love when you say like, meet me at the lake for a party this weekend. You know, that is so, so fun. I love when you jump in and have fun with this. So I, I took a few of the blocks, just the few that came up, just to show you some variety. These are posted at the Facebook page. Also, there is a posting at the article from Wednesday at the very end of that. So you can post your block there or see the blocks that people have posted. And I want to show you here also Kimberly's blocks. Kimberly from uh, the Fat Quarter Shop. And she's using the uh, kitty fabric, the Halloween kitty fabric called Kitty Corn. Uh, so this is her two blocks so far. Aren't they sweet? They're so nice. I love that, love that fabric. It's darling. And that's in now. So if you're looking for it, the links are below. And click the subscribe. That'll be sure that you know where my channel is so you can go to your subscription list. It also helps me and honestly I have a goal I would love to hit a hundred thousand because then YouTube sends us a plaque wouldn't that be cool to have a plaque <laughs> the little things in life right <laughs> so what else oh Becky Becky at power tools with thread uh, is also sewing my blocks so you want to be able to check out her channel so go over there too okay we have uh, bats and booze coming up. Finally, the fabric is in. And I was just watching the live stream today, uh, this morning, before I taped this uh, on Friday, before I taped this with Kimberly. And she said that, uh, here's a picture. The Bats and Booze starts August 2nd. So it's very, very soon. And if you want the kit, uh, you know, they have only so many and they had to substitute. The kits might get one or the other of this bat fabric because so many people want the kits that uh, you know they had to have some of the kits have to have a different fabric for the bat so it's still darling either way cute 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 and there is a cross stitch also with it the pattern is free for the cross stitch and the uh, the bats and boo quilt it's not very big I don't know the size of it I forget uh, but I am going to use Halloween fabrics that I've had for a while so I'll be sewing with stuff that has been in my collection. And I will, when I start it, I will show you my box of Halloween fabric. Ah, <laughs> way more than I can ever use. Um, but that's the fun of being a quilter. So I, today, if you looked on your calendar, it is called Peach Ice Cream Day. <laughs> because that's what today, today is peach ice cream day. So I'll be peach ice cream. And I can tell you that I can't eat a lot. I can't eat dairy very much. So having real ice cream is a little troublesome for me now. So I am going to go look at the grocery store and see if there is a, a non-dairy, you know, one of the soy based or coconut milk or whatever peach ice creams today to get. But a real peach ice cream with real peaches in it. Oh my goodness. I've had that before and it is so, so yummy. So if you love peach ice cream, or just tell me what kind of ice cream do you like? Give me a comment down below. I'd like to know that. <laughs> I also like raspberry sorbet. I like anything with like caramel and nuts in it, like a vanilla, crunchy, caramely thingy. Yeah, that would be good with nuts. <laughs> a little mail call. Anne sent me this beautiful card. Look at this. Look how gorgeous that is. And it's embossed. I'm going to see that. Look at that. It's like embossed, that paper. So you can see like the quilting on there. Isn't that cool? So actually, Anne used to live in my area years ago. So Anne, it is much different than when you lived here. A lot busier. And I'm sure there's still construction on I-95 somewhere. There always is. So she sent me a bunch of edges. Lots and lots of fun stuff. And one of them's a big, big piece. So they're so cool. Look at the dots. Fun, fun, fun. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Anne. <laughs> All right, what do I got up on the back wall there? I put up my Just One Charm pack to share my friend Cheryl Bricky's book. Does all the quilts in here take one charm pack plus some other things? So that is, that looks good. I'm loving it. But what I did is the colors are not 
um, sort of done correctly, uh, correctly for me. Here's what the, here's one of the versions of the quilt in her book. So what I did is I just, I made all the half square triangles and then for the quilt just now, I just put them up. I just took the pile of them. And so they're basically sewn kind of in a color order. You know, they started with, I started with reds and blues. Yeah, so it's reds, blues, and then there's this yellow. So basically what I need to do is rearrange them some because I just don't want these kind of two little chunks of yellow. I would rather have it a little more random. So I think the easiest way to do that will be to take the yellows and just swap them out with reds and blues. And then there's other places like this where uh, these two fabrics are like, like the same exact print and I just don't want those right next to each other. So I'll look for places like that. But other than that, it's in pretty, I think it's pretty good. This was so much fun. You really need to get uh, Cheryl's book because she has brilliant quilts in here for taking that one charm pack you have and doing something darling. Now this quilt could easily then, if you want it a little bigger, you could put a border on it. It's great for a child size quilt, just as it is. Um, even a little bit larger baby quilt. I mean, it's gonna be smaller than this when I sew it up. It is, what size is it? Uh, 40 by 48. Now, if you actually just wanted it as a square, you could do a 40 by 40 table topper and just stop there and then take the extra charm packs and make a pillow to go with it. That would be super cute or use it to make some sort of a table runner or edging of a placemat for a table setting. So there's some ways to sort of play around with that design. So you could actually make it, I think a square would be about here, right? Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. No, nine. Okay, so I think about down there. So that'll get you, get you the the right, the right size. All right. So what I'm going to do is leave this up here so that I can sew it as I'm doing other things. What I want to do is while I'm here, I'm I'm doing some editing and some other uh, design work. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to take little breaks and just sew this up. I I plan to do that often, but it doesn't always happen. So. Today, I'm going to make it happen. So I have two more things on our Saturday chat. Uh, oh, here, no, another one. I sewed up all those crumbs from the blooms from making the basket because I knew all those little pieces left from the basket needed to be done something. So I thought, I'm just going to right away. I'm going to sew them up last night. Um, so that was really fun. I could see this as the center of a block, or if I get it a little bit bigger, it can go with the other crumb blocks that I've, that I've been doing for the year. So I will do that. So we had a little conversation like in the comments uh, the other day about uh, when I was, when, one of my posts for the gathering of the quilts, you know, my quilt, you know, sort of sorting, documenting, charity giving, um, <laughs> <laughs> event, I guess you could call it my my epic journey, <laughs> epic journey, the gathering of the quilts. But there was a sub conversation in there, and who started it? I think Lisa started it by saying that, um, you know, what, what this conversation is is I sort of gave myself the own title of it's like the quilt maker's soul, uh, because what happens is a lot of people, I guess, start making quilts and they just give them all away. And that's what Lisa said happened to her, has happened to her is that she started making quilts and she basically has given every single quilt away. She doesn't own any of them and she didn't take pictures. So she doesn't really have any documentation even, or she can't even really go back and look at what she produced over all the years. And she was saying that she's really been thinking about that and thought this is really something she wants to change. She wants to have a quilt, some quilts for herself and, and she would like to be able to in, and start documenting and taking pictures of what she gave away so she knows the work that she's created. Um, and then uh, Candace had also jumped in there and said she thought it was great that I said that I make quilts for myself. Um, she said a lot of times somebody, people will ask her while she's making a quilt, the first thing they ask her is who is it for? Um, I think if you have a habit of giving things away, then people are going to naturally assume they are all to be given away. But there are also people that just assume when you make things, you give them away. You don't make them for yourself. Um, so let me tell you what I did as a quilt maker when I started quilting. I started quilting for myself. I never occurred to me to give away the quilts. 
if I intend, you know, I was making because it was like learning to paint, um, learning to create sculpture. Uh, you know, I was making <clears throat> basically art in my mind. This is what it is. It's art. I was making that and uh, I was didn't really have a plan for it. I would just make it and, and experiment with color, experiment with design and do things that were cute. Uh, you know, just the whole the whole bag of that. But it never occurred to me that I was going to give these away. That wasn't the goal of me making them. Now, I have made quilts to give away, but when I do that, it's specifically to do that. It's like, okay, I want to give my mom a quilt or I want to give my friend a quilt. Um, and that is something that I plan. It's not just sort of the end all of the making for what I did when I started what I did when I started, which was about five years before I went into business. Business is a whole different thing. I make for a whole different uh, way. And I've talked about that on the Gathering of the Quilts videos, which you can go see at the playlist. So um, if you are like me and you're making things, uh, you do get to a point now where, you know, I have made a lot and I will look at them a little bit differently in the future because I will want to, um, you know, probably make things that I will give away to charity probably, or, you know, to some to people, but I will not probably change how I am creating because it's the creating part that feeds my soul. That's my quilt maker's soul, the, the making of them. Uh, then what I do with them is something else. That's like a different part of the process. Making them is the core of the process. That's what I love and the part that keeps me excited about this over 29 years. So excited that I still do it. So excited that I talk about it every day on a video. So excited that I make things all the time. That's, that's just me. I am a quilt maker and I, and I think I will always be. I don't see that going away. I did very early on, and I've told this story uh, when we were doing the Splendid Sampler one because I dedicated the block to my friend Lena. Uh, when I met Lena, when, when I actually met her, she was sewing hand appliqueing flowers in a little pieced basket block. And they were so darling. And I, I asked her, you know, this, I'm just meeting her. And I said, well, what are you making, Lena? And she says, oh, we're making this block. It's for, we're going to make a bunch of them. We're going to give the quilt away to a friend. And I thought, oh, that's a lot of work. And they're just going to give it away? I was like, wow. I didn't know anything about that. I didn't actually realize people would get to that point where they're making to, to give. Uh, as because I was very early on as a quilt maker, I was just making for an entirely different reason to experience the art of it and the, um, and the learning of it. I wasn't ever thinking about giving it to people. So Lena taught me a lot about the giving heart of a quilter. Uh, and she's a very good friend. She's recently moved. She was a local friend and she's recently moved way far away, the other side of the other side of the United States. Uh, so it'd be sad, won't see her. But that's that's sort of my little uh, you know, chat about quilt making. I would love to hear your thoughts on why you quilt. Um, how you think about your quilting now. If you've been quilting a long time, do you think about it differently than you did in the beginning? It's a really interesting, rich conversation, I think, to have uh, together. And one last, my cross stitch to show you the status. I have July, hope I don't drop the pin. I have July that I've got almost all the words done on the bottom. And then on the top, I need to uh, add in that little part I mix, missed. So what I'm going to do is work backwards. I'm going to take from the, this far edge and work towards the, the other area and then see where the gap is that I need to fill in. And then I have to fill in with some sort of little twinkly stuff like, like this, with the little yellow dots. That's what I have to fill in between here and what's supposed to be over there. So that's my, that's my other goal. All right, my friend, wish me luck on sewing some of this as a, in between edits, taking a break. Okay, I love you. Oh, oh, Monday, Monday, Monday is morning video. I'm gonna do two morning videos a month, two evening videos a month, so that uh, we'll be able to still have a few evening videos and uh, I love you. Okay, see you later. See you online.